Now, this whole discussion has really been based on the standard state, a galvanic cell in the standard state, for instance. What happens when a, we're looking at a galvanic cell that is not in a standard state? For instance, with concentrations that are not all one mole per liter for aqueous species. Well, then we need to somehow generalize out these relations to a non-standard galvanic cell. And think about what happens when we start in a non-standard state and allow that galvanic cell to proceed to equilibrium. The first point on this slide is actually quite nice. The relation between free energy change and cell potential generalizes to a non-standard cell. So delta G, now without the little circle indicating standard state, is equal to negative N times F times E cell without the little circle indicating the non-standard cell potential. So this is for a galvanic cell in a non-standard state. Now, from prior discussions of chemical thermodynamics, we've seen that delta G for the non-standard case is equal to the standard change in free energy, plus a term related to the fact that the reaction quotient is not equal to 1, the gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of Q. And now what we can do is replace these delta G terms with our negative NF E cell terms that we've developed previously to think about what happens in an electrochemical or galvanic cell situation. So doing that substitution, we get negative NF E cell under non-standard conditions is negative NF E naught for a standard galvanic cell plus RT natural log of Q. And this is going to give us insight into the cell potential for a galvanic cell at a reaction quotient. Let's just call that QI. And this corresponds to the change in free energy, if you like, in going from that initial reaction quotient QI to an equilibrium state, essentially to the cell fully discharged and at equilibrium. From this equation right here follows a very important equation in electrochemistry the Nernst equation, and this tells us the non-standard cell potential given the standard cell potential and a term that includes the reaction quotient Q for the galvanic cell, as well as RT divided by NF. Dividing both sides by negative NF, we arrive essentially at the Nernst equation. Now, what does the Nernst equation tell us? Well, when Q is equal to 1, that corresponds to a cell in its standard state. And so E cell there is simply equal to E naught cell. This is exactly what we would expect. As Q varies from the standard value of 1, the cell potential will go up or down, depending on whether Q goes up or down. And the way that works is, as Q increases, well, think back to our fundamental equilibrium concepts. As Q increases, that means we're adding product. This will tend to push the cell potential down because in many ways, we're making the redox reaction less spontaneous by piling on products, right? And the opposite is also true. If Q is decreased, well, essentially we're adding reactants in that situation, pushing the reaction toward products and making it, quote unquote, more spontaneous. And so, the Nernst equation is intuitive in that sense. It jives with Le Chatelier's principle and prior discussions of spontaneity and free energy change that we've seen in discussions of chemical thermodynamics more generally. This is just for a redox reaction in an electrochemical context. Now, to make the math a little bit easier, I did want to show a version of the uh, Nernst equation that is very commonly used under pretty normal looking conditions. When the temperature is 298 Kelvin, and we change the natural log to a common or base 10 log, we get that the cell potential under non-standard conditions is equal to the standard cell potential minus about 59.2 millivolts or 0.0592 volts divided by N, the number of moles of electrons transferred, times the base 10 log of Q. This gives us a sense of how much, for example, increasing Q by a factor of 10 will drop the cell potential. So this equation is really powerful. Given information about the galvanic cell temperature and the reaction quotient, we can make a prediction of what the cell potential will be, as long as we know the standard cell potential, which we can get from standard reduction potentials in most cases. One more thing we should think about here with the Nernst equation is what happens when the value of the reaction quotient is equal to K, the equilibrium constant. Well, in that case, the cell potential becomes the standard cell potential, 
which we've already seen is equal to RT divided by NF times the natural log of K, minus a term due to the value of Q, which is equal to K, RT divided by NF times the natural log of K. So this first term comes from the standard cell potential, which is related to the natural log of K, as we saw on the triangle previously. That's this relation on kind of the right side of the triangle here. And the second term comes from the Nernst equation and the natural log of Q term built into the Nernst equation. Now, these terms are identical, and so, of course, the cell potential is going to come out to zero. And this generalizes for galvanic cells at equilibrium. When Q is equal to K, we're at equilibrium. We know this from fundamental equilibrium concepts, right? And what that means in an electrochemistry context is that the cell potential of a galvanic cell is equal to zero. The cell has no driving force because the chemical potentials of the two half cells, and indeed the actual redox half cell potentials of the two half cells are equal to each other. So there's no driving force for electrons to move from one half cell to the other. 